Welcome back to our beginner web scraping series where we're looking at how to set up a web scraping program using Python for beginners. In our last episode, the first one, we said we ended up with code that looked like this, where we went to this website and we pulled out some basic product information from the first page. I introduced this concept of an extract text function that we wrote which handles this attribute error, which if you've done any basic web scraping before, you'll know is one of the most common ones. But this code in itself does doesn't do an awful lot so in this video we're going to expand on it we're going to make it better we're going to create lots of functions to do different things for us so we don't have to repeat ourselves and we're going to go through all of the pages or on this website of which there are 17 and I'll show you how to handle it at the end what happens when we get to page number 18. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to add in some more information, just one more information point, just so it's a bit better for us. So I'm going to copy this line of price and I'm going to change the name price to savings. And we're going to go ahead and find this savings element on the page. Uh, like I'm going to click on it here and we see this save 30%. Let's move this up so we can see. And we have here our div class with this uh, data dash UI. Now, if you watch the last video, you'll notice that with this extract text function that we created, all we need to do is update the selector. So I'm going to do here, I'm just going to type in uh, div data dash UI. And I think I've just re removed it from my clipboard. So let's grab it again. This is the tag here equals this and then do that like that. So I'm just gonna save this and we're gonna run this just to make sure that that works. And then you'll see how useful this extract text function can be. Okay, great, so there we go, we got our savings extra. So we have one extra data point now, which is useful. So let's start building out this with some better functions, because this is not that great, this is a bit of a mess. So at the moment, we can see that we have this part of our code, which basically gets the HTML from the page. So let's create a function using that. So let's come here and we'll say, and I'll put the URL, we'll have it inside for the moment. We'll change that in just a second. We'll have our new function called uh, get HTML like this. And we're gonna basically in, uh, indent all of this code in it like so. And we're gonna return from this function the HTML from this page that we've created. Now we want to have a parsing function, which is essentially this. So I'm gonna create a new function again, and we'll call this one parse page. And we need to give it a, a uh, argument here, and this is gonna be the HTML that we're going to be getting. So let's indent these. There we go. Now we need to have a new function that's gonna be in control of running everything. We call this the main function. It's very common in Python. We have a main here, and let's move this to the middle of the screen. And we basically want to say our HTML is gonna be equal to the get HTML function. And then we're gonna do our pass page on that HTML. Now we don't have anything coming out of this pass page function yet, so we're just gonna leave it as printing. Then finally, as per Python tradition, we'll have our if name is equal to main. And if that is true, we run the main function. This basically just means that if we call this code, this, this file main.py directly, it will run this. And if it's imported, it won't saves us some time and it's a good way to run your code with this practice. So if you're not used to doing this yet, I would get used to it. It's a good way to do it. So let's have a quick check, make sure we've got everything, our URL, user agent. Cool, so let's try running this now and make sure we haven't broken anything. Okay, still works, great. But what do we wanna do is we don't actually want to be passing in this every time into this function because then we can't actually easily change the URL. So within our get HTML function, I'm gonna say, well, we're gonna give it the URL and I'm gonna call this base URL like this. And I'm gonna move this, the actual URL for the page, down into the main function. Let's paste that in there. And I'm gonna call this base URL and then we'll give it into this function. As you can see, my code editor is saying argument missing. All right, super, there we go. So let's come back to the top and remove the URL from within here. And instead of giving the httpx.get URL, we're gonna say we're gonna give it the base URL, which is gonna come from our function here. So if we were to say, hey, where does this base URL come from? It comes from here. 
So we know that that's going in. I'm going to leave the headers within this function. I think that's okay. So I'm going to save and I'm going to format with black uh, and just tidy up my code. Black is a great formatter to use. It's very opinionated, which I think is good in this case. So now we have our function set out. This is looking a lot better, a lot neater and tidier, and we can now start to expand on this. So what's the first thing that we want to do? Well, we want to check out how the pagination works on this page, on this website. So what I tend to do is I come down, I have a look at the uh, pages, I'll just move this out of the way, click on page number two and see how the URL changes. As we can see, we get this e uh, question mark page is equal to two and that will follow along. So if we were to change this to three, we would get the next page. This is fairly typical and pretty common so we can handle this nice and easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the base URL and I'm gonna say page is equal to because we're gonna dynamically add in that number. So what I'll do is in our function up here, I'm gonna say we wanna give it a page number as well. So the page number that we're going to pass in, we need to add in to the end of the base URL. But because the page number is going to be an integer, we cannot concatenate a base a string in Python with an integer. So in here, I'm just going to change this to a string uh, on the fly. So when it comes to this, it's going to add it as a string to the end of our URL. So that means that here, the page number will get put in here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and put in page number one and we'll see something curious might happen. Okay, so we got nothing. Um, that's interesting because our code ran but nothing happened. So let's come back to the top and we'll print out our response.status code. Now I mentioned this in the last video and we'll see what we're actually getting back. Okay, 301, that's interesting. So 301 is a redirect and by default, HTTPX does not handle redirects. But we can tell it that we want to, we wanna follow redirects by adding this into our code. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So in here, we'll have headers as that and we'll have our follow redirects is true. This means now when we get to here, it's going to give us the information back. If we go back to the website, you'll notice that if I do page is equal to one, it redirects back to this URL. And that's why we need to have this redirects is equal to true. So how are we gonna handle the pagination? Well, we have our function that's gonna take in a page number here. So what we can do is we can now put this inside of a loop. Now there's a few options here. You could use a while loop, but I'm gonna use a for loop for x in range, a range which means we're gonna say, hey, starting at the number we give it and going all the way up to the one that we end with, give me a loop through there. So for example, if I was to do for x in range one to 10 and then print out x and run this, we'll get the numbers up here. 1, 2 to 10. 200 is the status code, so this is what I just did. So using this, we can now actually give it and create it the create the page number. So I'm going to remove the print. Actually, let's leave the print in. We're going to indent in this, and we're going to say, hey, instead of our hard-coded 1, we're going to put in X. Now, range is up to, an, up to but not including the last number, so this is going to give us pages 1 to 9. Okay, so let's run. We can see that the pages are all coming through. I'm on four at the moment and we ended up here. So we ended up on page nine and these are the products there. So this is a good start. But there's a few things wrong with this. The first one being that what happens when we increase this and we go to the last page. We'll cover that in just a second. But what I want to address here is we're actually we're just printing our items out. Now, if we were to actually want to do something with these, we would need to return these from a function. But we can't use return here because otherwise it's just gonna find the first one on the page and return that. So we could create a list. So let's say um, product list is equal to a list. Not that, that is not what I wanted to do. There we go. And instead of printing the item, I'm gonna leave the print in for the moment. We could do item, we could do product list rather, dot append item and then outside of that loop we can return our product list okay so i am actually going to remove this print now so i'm going to run this now but i'm going to run it outside of neovim and we'll see 
that we're going to get a list back every time as we go through the page. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but what's going to happen is at the end, we're going to have a list of lists of our products, of dictionaries. So we would have to flatten that or do something. There's just a much better way. So instead of appending everything to a list in a, inside our pass function like this, which we are not going to do, we are going to yield out from this function the item. And what this means is we then get a generator object. So this is a slightly more uh, complicated Python concept. But what it means is this generator object here we can actually iterate over. So I'm going to change this at the moment just so um, what I can demonstrate on just one page. And this now is our data, which is an iterable. So I can do for item in data we can print out that item. Now this is going to mean that every time we go through this, we need to make this two, otherwise we get nothing. We're actually going to get this uh, out here. So this is this means now the item from our, our pass function, we have access to here because we're iterating over that generator. So we could then do something with it here. So we could add this to a list or whatever we wanted to do with our output. So be mindful when you're, uh, returning products or information from your passing functions, yield is a great way of doing it. So we'll leave that in there now. So let's try something else. Let's try going to our page number. I think it was 17 was our last one. So let's do 17 as the last one and we'll just make it up to 100. Let's see what happens. Let's clear you up and run again. Page 17, okay. Ah, So now we can see that just going to stop this and we'll have a look. We can see that page 17 was a 200 response and we got this information. Great. But page 18, 404, 19, 404, all the way down. And it's going to keep going until we hit the end of our um, 4x in range loop here, which is 100. So we're making a load of extra requests that are not going to have any data in whatsoever. So we want to think about how we're going to handle this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to our get HTML function and instead of doing print response status code, I'm going to add in response.raise for status. Now this is a built in method in HTTPX and requests, which means it's going to raise an exception when it gets to a status that it cannot use. And in that case, our 404 status is going to be that one. So we're going to hit this and we're now going to stop our code, but we're going to get this untidy error that which we need to handle. Now you could leave it like this. This does tell you what's happened, but it's not great and it's very untidy. So we want to handle this exception. So we're going to come back to HTTPX again and we can see that here we get this uh, suggested piece of code here that's a try and accept that's going to handle our error. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to come back into my code and we're going to paste it in here. Like so, okay, that needs to be indented. There we go, we can remove that. And this is says response, but ours is not response, it's just R-E-S-P. Okay, cool. So now we have this, we're handling that error. So let's try it again. Okay, so we're handling the error, as in we're printing, but all we're doing is we're printing out. So we're not actually stopping our code or in any way. And we're just saying, hey, this is a 404. So it's up to you how you wanna handle this. What I'm going to do in this case is in our accept statement. So when we say, hey, we find this error, which is the status error, we're going to print this out. I'm going to add in here um, page limit exceeded just so it's a bit more obvious to us what's going on. And then I'm going to return out false. Now you could uh, put some code in here to stop your program. I'm just going to return false. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to say in here, if HTML is false, break. So what we're saying is, if we hit that extra last page where we say there's no data here and we get that 404 and it says page limit exceeded, we're going to return false from this function. So we're going to check that if this is false, because this is what's come out of this function, we're going to break out of our for loop here. So let's try it. Python main. So now we have our last page, which was page 17. We're trying to do page 18, which obviously doesn't exist. We get our error 404, page limit exceeded. We break out of our loop and our program ends neatly. 
Okay, so let's go ahead, let's try all of this together. So I'm gonna change the 4X in range here. Let's make this back to one so we can start at the beginning. And instead of just printing X, I'm going to do an F string here, which means we can put X in our brackets and we can type along here. So we can say, uh, let's say gathering page and we'll say we're getting this page and we're still just gonna print the item out for now. Now, one thing that I am gonna do is up here in the top of my code is I'm gonna import in time and we're gonna add in a little sleep just so we don't send too many requests in one go. So at the end of uh, this one here where we've got the HTML, I'm just gonna put time.sleep. I'm just gonna put a one second sleep in. In fact, I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna put it at the bottom of our code of our loop here, just so it's a bit tidier. We can really see what's going on. Again, I'm gonna format with black, just make sure everything's neat and tidy. Let's close, let's clear up our terminal and we're gonna now run this again and we should get all of the information coming through here. So here's page two, you can just about see the page numbers coming through and we're waiting for one second in between each request just so you know we're not overloading with requests to the server. Making 17 requests in a second is not really gonna be an issue but this is just good practice you can make your own decisions on that if you want to. So we're gonna to get towards the end, here's page 15 and 16 and 17, and we should now have our break after page 17, page limit exceeded, and we got all of the information back there. So here in this code, in this lesson, what we've done is we've really expanded on that real basic code. We've added in some basic ways to handle the 404 when we reach the end of the page. We've added in some functions to make our life easier. So it means that we can neatly loop through in our main function, our, our whole code and all the pages. We can really see with this main function what's going on. We can say we're looping through and what we're doing here now. And we're yielding the item out of our pass function. Again, I said this earlier, but I really recommend using this yield when you're trying to return data from a function like this. So that's gonna do it for this video. There's gonna be one more in this series where we're gonna be looking at what can you actually do with this data? How can you save it? What's the best options? We'll look at saving it to CSV files and databases, and then calling it back and looking at it. If you've enjoyed this, come and join the Discord, the link's below. Come in and tell me what I did wrong and what I could do better. I always appreciate that. And hang out and have a chat. And also check out the first video in this series if you haven't seen that. Or load of more videos on my channel where I talk about basic up to more advanced web scraping stuff. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.